good to see everyone here on a Saturday afternoon. Thank you for staying. I think Matthew stole the majority of my thunder from the pitch with that uh, introduction. So thank you for that, Matthew. Uh, so I'm here today to talk to you about Next Empty Solar Fund. Next Empty Solar Fund, as Matthew said, is an investment company. It's focused on renewables. What we do, um, this talk is about, is specialising in solar. So Next Empty Solar Fund, as it says in the name, we predominantly invest in, in solar. So first of all, I'll start with the exciting part, the disclaimer, any can say during this presentation is not financial advice, so please do speak to your financial advisors, and it's the usual legal job that we have to say for these very interesting presentation. So first of all, an insight to the solar fund, as I said, we're a specialist at solar fund, we use the plus after solar because the solar fund is really evolving from just solar. So when the investor trust the first launch, they ideally focused on subsidy solar and it proceeds since subsidy solar have phased out on a top site on subsidy solar and the plus really stands for the plus technologies which complement solar so the likes of energy storage and ancillary technologies which we will touch upon. So next energy solar fund is a fund that generates new energy and it helps tackle the climate change so not only do you get the financial return but you also get the benefit of knowing that your investment is doing good in the world. Uh, Next is Solar Fund, as it's an investment uh, company, it's managed by Next Energy Capital, and we'll touch on Next Energy Capital later on the presentation. But Next Energy Capital business specialist, the investment manager, it manages about 3.3 billion, and across the uh, different vehicles it manages, and this is from Delicious Fund. So today's talk, we're going to talk about the attractive dividend, which Next Energy Solar Fund is currently paying. We're going to talk about the strong inflation linked revenues. So as Matthew said, 50% of the revenues come from government subsidies. The other 50% of the revenue is far inherently linked to a natural inflation hedge through power. Cultsy power is a, a part of the calculation of inflation. We have a large portfolio of assets that so we physically own the assets. We do not invest into companies that own the assets and physically own them. So these are real assets you can touch that generate cash. And uh, we have strong expected budget generation. So we always look at how we extract value from the fund and that fund then relates into how the dividend, how we support the dividend. Um, the really beautiful thing about renewables and infrastructure is it's the low correlation, it's asset class. So the correlation it has to the rest of the markets so and why that could be a really good position in the portfolio. And finally, the EHG angle, we classified as an article mine fund. So for everyone in this room, probably doesn't mean much, but in the, the well of reporting from an EHG perspective, it means a hell of a lot. So it's really, really hard to actually get the data from an EHG perspective from how many greenhouse gases you're recording and actually portraying that to the investment community and how that's supported. So the ultimate mine fund is really, really hard to get, and it basically needs a dark green fund. So we tick the box from sustainability and ESG, as you would expect from, from a solar fund. Uh, so moving on, uh, the next thing to say fund portfolio. So this step, we own physical assets. So the 99 operational assets we currently have, we have 91 in the UK and eight in Italy. As you see from the, the graph here, we've also got uh, assets in the orange and the assets in the orange are made for a $50 million uh, commitment into a private solar infrastructure fund called Next Power Free ESG. And that a private fund is also managed by Mexins Capital. The reason why we made that $50 million commitment is it's super, super attractive and it's really a way for the fund to get that diversification instantly into the international geographies such as the US, Chile, Portugal, uh, Poland, and, and Greece. And the way of doing that without taking physical risks for the ground. So the next NAD free BSG team have people on the grounds, assets on the grounds that so we're massively de-risking and getting that diversification there from the outset. But the other reason you made that um, 50 minute commitment, it, it opened up a bucket of opportunities. So you're probably thinking, Peter, why, how is your fund different from the other renewable investment companies in the market? This is one of the key differentiators. It allows us to do co-investments alongside for the large institutional investors and pension funds in the world, and these assets which number of peers can have access to, so once again it opens that bucket of opportunities. And the phone size is currently 865 megawatts, now in, in real terms about £1.2 billion pound fund, so we're listed on FTSE, or uh, we are from the FTSE 250 uh, constituents, we're listed on the previous segment of the stock exchange, so we are trading like an equity, but we're strapped up a close-ended uh, investment company, as you may expect. So the quick, uh, so to explain the portfolio, uh, quick is the slide on where we're going at the pipeline. Uh, so obviously solar is our bread and butter. It's what we have uh, been doing since we IPO 2014. What we are looking now is how we diversify across the solar sector, so not just the UK and Italy, 
getting those international assets. We shaped our investment policy mandate a couple of years ago to allow 30% of um, solar into international OECD geographies. Uh, that's exactly what we're kind of looking to do in the future, so through the international strategy. For the co-investments I just mentioned, we've already, through that commitment, MP3, got two co-investments, which are already copied and available. The first one is in Portugal, it's a 210 megawatt asset in Santorin, and we've got 50 megawatts in Spain from Agonos Laws, well. once again, showing that opportunity, showing how we de-risk and how we capture capture value. And additional co invest opportunity is always in the cards, so we're still looking at doing additional co located And we also, um, as I said at the beginning, the funds originally started as a subsidized fund, as the cost of solar for was nip friendly, you're able to build these assets on subsidized, and we've still got some um, some assets which are subsidy free, which are in development, so once again, they at that side. Now the super exciting thing about this fund is as it's evolved, the next step of the energy transition is from our doorstep. So we're talking about energy storage and energy storage is, is a complementary technology to solar. It just, it just makes sense. So if you think solar during the day, you can only produce energy when the sun is shining. It's a super cool technology. With energy storage, you're able to change the way the revenue profile works without taking on too much risk. So what we're really looking at to doing in the energy storage mix is not turning into energy storage time. That's not what we want. We want diversification from a technology, from a revenue perspective, and add planning that way. So all in all, we've got a pipeline about five hundred million. So obviously, lots of lots of room for growth there. So uh, important to talk about revenue generation and cash flows. So as we mentioned earlier, fifty percent of the revenues have been government subsidies. The other fifty percent come through our active hedging strategies. So once again, how we differentiate ourselves from the peers, we have an active hedging sales desk within the firm. And that hedging sales desk will basically look forward into the future market where we can trade power prices and basically place these short trades in the market to build up a position where it allows us to get future like really strong and high capability of future cash flows. So then we turn around and say, we're going to pay an next of debt of this. We have a strong degree of confidence that that can be reached. And as you see here, at the moment, obviously the power prices have been a bit crazy as of late as everyone in this room is probably experienced it through their, their power bills. As the years go on, even in 2025, 20, 26, we're hedging an average big price of 147 pounds to megawatt, which is absolutely ginormous. And spread out to it about two years ago, you're thinking about 50 or 60 pounds per a megawatt. So I suppose the most important thing in the room, which everyone is interested in, is actually the return for a book. So we have been around, that we are going to 2014. We've got a track record of nine years of dividend growth. Uh, important. So you mentioned that that dividend growth is also covered as well. So the financial year has just stopped. We won the financial year from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. Uh, we paid a 7.25p dividend. And we'll touch on a second about the opportunity there in a second. So the current market opportunity. Um, and I suppose this is also a really key point for everyone in this week today. So the current dividend yield on, on this fund is 7% which did, was his ginormous, but was essentially a very safe asset. Uh, the latest share price of the a couple of days ago is around 172 And obviously, the other structures and investment companies really bought and look at the net asset value and uh, what you share, and that's 129 point, so 120.9. So we're trading about 10% discount, when, and that is really bought to note that the whole sector is trading at discount, and that discount really creates an opportunity for people to come into the fund. Because normally, how you would grow these type of vehicles, so for instance, with being invested in it. So for years and years, years, the way you'd grow these days, you would find an asset, you would use a short term credit facility to purchase those assets, then you'll go to the capital markets and raise equity. You can't come and do that at the moment because no one in the industry can raise capital and they're trading at its count. So that's cost that the whole board. So from an investor's perspective, it's more attractive to come in now than it is on a secondary market equity issuance or even that an idea. So super, super attractive from this point. Um, really important to, to note, and a lot of people in Norway doesn't doubt the share price performance of the true reflection on how a fund performed. In this case, because we're an income fund, it's really, really important to look at the total term. So here, when you can see the little Ds on the line, that's when the dividends have been paid. If you looked at the share and the performance from a total term perspective, we've performed since IPO a return of about 80%. So really, really impressive track record. But it also, it, falls into the ethos of the fund, right? If you invest into this fund, it's not a short term to play. This should be a long term income play within to fluid to fluid. Yeah, my time, I've still got lots of time. And so the next energy solar fund structure. 
Uh, I'll, I'll touch in more detail as well as we get further through the slide. Uh, but Mexican Custode Fund, as I said, uh, run by work for the investment manager called Vector Niche Capital. It also has a operating asset manager called Wise Energy. Uh, why is that important? Because once you have the assets, they tend to have a lifespan of between 30 to 40 to 50 years. So really, really important that you extract value and build managing your assets properly. Uh, on the right here, you can see that uh, there's an independent board of directors. There's actually six directors on the board now. And, uh, and they're fully independent uh, as the Guernsey base. So the majority of the board are basically Guernsey. Uh, the reason I include the slide was to give an indication of how we have to physically hold the real assets. Once again, we don't invest the companies that hold so that we physically hold of the assets. So we had a whole co nettle and under the whole co nettle we had a bunch of SPVs which owned the assets. And uh, so why Soda as an asset class? I think for the first time say Soda, everyone kind of closed their eyes and it was a man over there with his eyes closed. Uh, it's actually a really, really interesting asset class because there's no different parts. It's super, super simple. It's fake, it's, it's simple electronics, right? And um, there's an abundant energy source. So more energy from the sunlight hits the earth in a single hour to power the whole world that just needs for all year. But the only problem is obviously how do you harness that energy? There's been continuous cost reduction in solar. So the, the last 12, 30 years, the costs have fallen by about 90%. So you can afford to build these things such as the free and which is why it's super attractive. It's also super, super fast to build solar as well with the right bank versus you can build an asset in around eight months. Okay, and why is that important? Because you can build this as the quickest renewable form of energy to build. And that's really, really important in the variable world with governments pushing for net zero 2050, there's everything about energy security, especially here in the UK. So it's super, super important to, to have, have that growth. And it's also super predictable, right? We know in about five years time when the sun's going to come up, when the sun's going to get out, solar power isn't just generated from sunlight, it's all about the irradiation levels and the variance of the irradiation levels is really predictable. Now with the right assets, performing in the right way can make that super predictable. And with the hedging strategy, which I mentioned, gives us really, really strong visibility on those future cash flows. So the, 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 this talk is obviously about Metin Solar Fund and why a specialist matters. And that's what we're going to touch on now. So Metin Capital, we manage Metin Solar Fund. We have not just the listed fund, which is Metin Solar Fund. We have private funds in the market as well. So we manage 3.3 billion of, of assets. That's about 350 solar assets. That, why is that also? Because it means we're one of the largest best managers in the world when it comes purely to the solar. We know all the deals that are going on. We are across the whole market. So when it comes to adding value from investors, that's exactly what we do. Now, why is NG, which I mentioned, the sister company, uh, the operating asset manager, the one that looked after the solar asset? That doesn't just manage the assets of Net Energy Solar Fund. It doesn't just manage the assets of the private funds. It manages third party funds as well. Now, why is that important? Economies kind of to scale. We manage over 1,350 assets at Wise NG. Now, that's huge. What does that mean? That means we can look at all these assets, look at how they're performing. We can build proprietary technologies. We can look at ways to make the, you know, the efficiencies increase, introduce new technologies. And when I say introduce new technologies, the technology around solar has not really changed for decades. But what has changed is how you operate in the technologies around solar. So we're using stuff like thermo drone fly over the sides to look at anomalies from the heat spots. So you can correct it quickly, obviously call out the owner divider and make sure everything's everything's working well. Uh, the final, uh, oh, I'm not conscious about that. I'm running out of time. Uh, the final part is Starlight, which is a development company, which is also really important for renewables uh, in, in the space, because obviously we're developing from ground field and it's a green field perspective. Uh, it's a quick, a quick couple of slides on ESG. Obviously we're an ESG uh, funds. There's more than just then obviously the financial term, which is great. We do a lot of means we integrate EHG from the very start process. So EHG isn't an afterthought, it's interwound throughout everything. And obviously, but the, the fund will power enough hopes or about 345,000 hopes uh, per year. There. So obviously a substantial uh, impact on the fund. Uh, we do lots around biodiversity and social enhancement. So if you've come past my stand on M3, you've probably seen some pots of uh, town multi. And last year we had some Connie but we try and do a lot around biodiversity to show and educate really everyone that the solar isn't taken away from the land. If anything, solar is completely misunderstood in the media at the moment. I'd be pleased to stat someone earlier, I think they laughed, but 
more land in the UK is used to grow Christmas trees. It's very top around Christmas, let's say, in great and operation of solar across. So more land is used for uh, aerospace, more land is used for golf courses and operation. So it's a complete misunderstanding when it comes to kind of biodiversity and uh, and the UK food security. This is really, really important point to make because when, if, and if anyone talks to Jerry Clarkson's farm, when they're talking about the diversification for farmers, and that's exactly what solar farms is, because solar farms are generally built on the Twitter scale. The farm spills, you're diversifying farms' income, you're actually increasing food security because you're giving them a life, and you're giving them 30, 40 years worth of rent, which is normally inflation late. And they're able to obviously carry on what they're doing, and obviously the biodiversity benefits around that with what we do around partly flowers and flowers, increasing the pollinate in the area and, and quickly increasing the the yield of, of the crops as, as we did that. I don't have about enough time, Mark. Then you've got to check it out. Yeah, that's good books. I did. There you go, please. Well, I've got a rock clock. Uh, so, a couple of things to uh, take away from, from this talk. So, next info, the ticker for the next energy solar fund is NESF. Uh, lots of data for four things to cover. We've got the board of directors which are covered. Ongoing charge, and see really important. So, we're investment companies. Please look at that on the ARC website. And the investment policy of what we can invest into. So as the uh, mentioned here, ten percent of of the gross asset value to what to bid it can be invested into energy storage. Uh, we're currently in the market talking to all of our investors because we're looking to increase that. Uh, the rationale of increasing that, as I said, is, is energy storage is a super important part of the evidence portfolio. It's also really, really important to increase energy storage in the UK because it will increase the penetration of renewables. And as we put more renewables into the network is going to give intimacy power, and that's where batteries uh, would come in and be really exciting. And also, once again, they also had the, the revenue, they unlock a lot of revenue streams and uh, opportunities for the fund. So we're supported by that large but, um, portfolio, but we're also looking at that kind of growth we can get because we could sit here and do nothing, and the, the portfolio would pay its dividend and it'd be covered. But what we really want to do is make sure we're focused on the next, kind of, not just the next five years, but 10 years, and how this fund will evolve and the good that that it can do. Uh, so finally, going forward, um, and I think I've had to find that, uh, going forward, we're, we continue to drive through solar and energy storage capacity to deliver growth. Uh, obviously, the investor returns by touch upon are backed by in large diversified portfolios, so once again, secure and low risk from that perspective. Uh, we continue to provide attractive growth dividends with a nine-year track record uh, speaks for itself. Uh, we continue to put on another creative value to shareholders. So once again, going through the energy storage route, that's where we're going to look at that value. We can continue to optimize the running of the existing large portfolio. So in the things that she's seeing, cap out the reproducing costs, optimizing the portfolio, make things are running smoothly and adding new technologies when, when they come to, to that. Uh, we maintain strong capital structures, so obviously super important with them in the market environment we are at the moment and um, we continue to identify options in the pipeline that we we have so uh so i think i've run out of time and if anyone has got any questions please do come and find me on stall m3 because i think matthew's about to throw me up for me up but uh yeah thank you for today i've hopefully I've, I've touched enough on the actual basis we could talk for hours on this fuck and the actual industry itself because it's obviously it's a huge growth area at the moment there's just a huge market for the seat because it's an unloved space of the moment like to this trust and to the magical political ways of crazy. So uh, yeah, thank you everyone, and uh, I think it's a. Okay,